Hey guys, Wayne Richards here. I've got Caden, one of our coaching clients here. We're going over a bunch of his role plays uh, from the last week. Uh, mind you, we're knocking in crazy cold weather, so it's not the best situation for door knocking. Um, Caden, how much snow do you have up, up in Logan right now? Mm, I mean, depending on the area, but on average, probably about three feet. Three feet of snow, you guys. And this guy's out pounding the pavement and still making stuff happen. The last role play we just went through, and I'm going to do it again so you guys can catch it online here, um, of what he's saying. He's doing the right things. He's picking up the pitch. He's been in coaching a couple weeks. He's got some great stuff that he's starting to say. There's just some minor details we're going to tweak. We're going to go through two or three of these role plays um, and just kind of help him tweak some of that. So listen to this first one. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. Hey, my name is Caden with Achievement Realty. Um, did you name say I was going to stop by today? No. Uh, the main reason I'm out here is because um, the real estate market has changed so much, you know, the past three to four years. Not a lot of people know what's going to happen with it. Um, have you guys considered buying or selling any real estate? No. So right there, I corrected him a little bit because he said any real estate. So he's making it very general in the fact that we want to hone that into, have you considered buying or selling a home? And the main reason you want to do that is you want to make sure it becomes personal at that point. If you're saying any real estate, it could be any real estate across, you know, investing or, or, you know, thinking about buying a second home or helping somebody else to buy a home, their mom, their aunt, make it personal. And that's just a small tweak. We'll no. keep going. Is this uh, your forever home? Probably not. Uh, can you get to the point? It's a little bit cold. So notice he, he says, is this your forever home? The guy says, no. He's like, get to the point, man. It's cold out here. What's your temperatures right now there, Caden? Um, on that particular day, I think it was like 35 or 40. Okay. So the snow had started melting a little bit, but it was cold. It was cold. It was cold. And people don't want to sit and hold their door open. So at this point, you've got to mirror the urgency of the, of the client, the customer, and you want to speed it up, right? So at this point, where I would go to is, you know, if we could save you to fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 by selling sooner, would you consider moving? And dive right into the urgency of where they're at. Here's where Caden takes it, which isn't bad, but he's, he's, you know, rushing a little bit to say, oh crap, these guys are getting pissy because I'm on their door. I've got to get off the doorstep. Let me hurry and see what I can come up with. And wasn't sure quite where to go here, but listen to him. Yeah. Um, so basically I'm just out seeing if anybody is wanting to buy or sell um, and help them figure out if now would be a good time for them. So not right now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, bye. So he's, he's being Mr. Nice Guy. Caden's like, hey, I'm basically, I'm just out here giving some good information to people to see if it would be a good fit for them. But at that point, he's not creating any urgency whatsoever to get them to make a buying decision. So what I want to do is commit them to make a buying decision now. Hey, the market is a buyer's market. Things are crazy. They're going to get worse. If you wait, it could cost you a bunch of money. Have you considered you know, doing this sooner, if I could save you 50 to 60,000 bucks. If they say no at that point, then I'm out, right? But if they say yes, hey, let me step inside really quick so I'm not letting all the cold air in. And let me show you how to do this real quick. And that's that's basically where I take right. it. Okay. <laughs> let me dive into another one. This one's pretty short. It's only a minute long. So probably didn't get very far on this one. How's it going? Good. Okay, my name is Caden Potter. I'm with Achievement Realty. Um, did your neighbors tell you I was going to stop by? One thing that I caught different on this one, Caden, than on the last one, the last one said, hey, how are you doing, right? This one, you dove right into it. Hi, my name is Caden with Sets and Sets Realty. That's a better start because once you start into the, hey, how are you doing? You're killing precious time in which they're saying, dude, I don't care who you are, what you're doing at my doorstep. I don't want to talk about how I'm doing or what you're doing. What do you need, right? So your approach when you start this one is 10 times better. Try to cut out the, hey, how you doings? Uh, just, just like you did on this one. Hey, this is Caden. I'm here for a reason. Let me get direct into the point. I know you have other things you want to be doing. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, by the day. I didn't. I just got home. Okay. Um, main reason I'm out here is the real estate market has changed so much for the past couple of years. And not a lot of people know where it's going to go. Have you guys considered buying or selling any real estate? Um, not really right now. Okay. Um, we just bought this last year, and so oh. we're pretty happy. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, what time last year did you guys buy? Um, it was May. In May. So kind of when it started to slow down a little. Okay, so as your question's there, 
what, why did you ask, what time did you buy last year? Where were you headed with that? Um, I don't know, it was honestly probably just a filler question. Okay. Um, I didn't really know where to go after that objection. That's a hard one because they just bought, right? Right. Yep. So what do you need to figure out if you're going to be able to sell them a house? Um, where are you going to go with that in order to gain any traction or ground? The forever home question? Not quite because they've only been in a year, but you're on the right path. We want, we need to know a timeline. How long do you guys plan on being in this house before making a transition? Or is this your forever home? Notice how I'm tying those two together. Because if they say three years, why three years? Right. And then you're going to fall right back to the same timelines as before. How much equity do you have in your house? I know you bought it a year ago, but I know you've got a bunch of equity in there. How much did you buy it around this price point? That's going to be my next question. And if you're in that neighborhood, you probably already know what home prices are going for, what they bought for, all of those things. Um, and then you can say, hey, with the equity you've got, if I can help you get into that next place sooner and save 50 to 60,000 bucks, would you consider it? Because right now, once you've gotten to this point, it's like, oh, I just bought. You're like, oh, when did you buy? And he's like, oh, I bought in this time. And really, you're just backing yourself into, great, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Have a great day, right? So the other questions are going to guide you through a process in which you can gather critical information to find out, is this even a possibility? Do they need to be there for six years? Do they need to be there for eight years? They've got kids that need to go through school. You know, what is it? Because most people, are you knocking townhomes, condos, houses? Yeah, townhomes. Townhomes. So chances are they're not going to be there that long. Even if they just bought a year ago, the average is two to three years. So if you could have found that time frame out and got them into a house sooner, and that might be your question is, hey, how long do you, will you guys stay in this before you end up getting into a house or you plan on being here for a long time? Because most yeah, people aren't going to stay into a house or in a townhome very long. Okay, let's keep going. See where you go. A little bit. Yeah, right when things started to slow down. So cool. Um, is this something that you guys are going to stay in forever or? Um, not forever, but um, at least with. Caden, you went there. You just went there too late. You got me? So you went there. Good job. Dude, that's exactly where you should go. Um, and, and, and you were just asking a filler question to try to figure out, get your bearings and get your traction. And that's just going to come with more experience as you gather in there. So you went there. Is this your forever home, right? Let's see what he says. For the next few years while we're both in school. So gotcha. Gotcha. Um, would you care to have um, like market updates? Okay. You went for a close on market updates when is the, that is the common thing real estate agents do. Hey, yep. can I close you on putting you in my database or, Hey, can I close you by giving you updates? He just told you that, that, yeah, this isn't his forever home. They plan on moving in two to three years. What's the real estate market going to be like in two to three years? Do they know? No, right? So honestly, we're doing a disservice to them by not helping them understand what the market's going to do, what potentially could happen, and how we could they could be outpriced out of the market. Right? right. So they bought, right, as the prices started to drop a little bit. But if we could help them sell and get into that next house, right now, what are new construction homes doing? They're going down. They're, they're dropping like crazy. Why? Yeah. Um, probably with, because of interest rates, trying to get more people to buy them. I don't know. Inventory. You're right. And that has to do with, with interest rates because, because interest rates are high. There's tons of leftover inventory. So builders are doing whatever they can to get rid of stuff. And they've got a ton more margins in it than a regular single family home does, right? They've got two to 300 grand in there they can play with to get these things sold, especially if they've got a bunch of inventory. Now tell me on a townhome market, how many more buyers are there for a townhome than a new single family home? Uh, quite a bit. A ton. So could we offload this house and help him make some money and then still get him into another house 
of what he wants to get into in three years at a way better rate. Right? Yeah. And Kate, you know the stuff, right? So that's where you've got to go. You've got to take him to that point where you're going, hey, what do you think the market's going to do over the next couple of years? Now, I'm firm that I can save you a bunch of money. Would you consider doing it sooner if we could save you a ton of money? And you can throw out whatever number you want. But in new construction right now, I guarantee you can save him 70000 bucks with upgrades and all kinds of other stuff to get them to buy right now in a, a home market rather than townhome market. And worst right. case scenario, could they rent that townhome out all day long Easy. and make their payments? Right. See how we didn't discuss any of that stuff. You went to close him on, hey, let me get you market updates and we'll just stay in touch. You can't get business by doing market updates. We want now business. We don't want future business. So you've got to essentially try to get now business every time. And Caden, you're super nice, dude. I mean, your, your pitch on all this stuff is phenomenal, but you're br being the brother in the neighborhood, right? And that's not a bad thing. It's just not anything that creates urgency. So by doing that, you're going to become the guy that sells three to four homes a year because you're going to get people that reach out to you if they remember you in two years, if you stay in touch, if you contact. But if you can convince every person you talk to at the door that right now is the best time to transact in real estate and you help them sell real estate, they build a bond with you, then they refer their neighbors, they refer their cousins. That's where you're going to build your business. It's not going to be off of the, yeah, let's let's just see how it goes and see see what happens, right? Let's see how you finish here. Every so often, is that something you'd be interested in? Um, not right now. Okay. Um, where we're not looking to sell for the next while. Just, yeah. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Well, I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you. Day. Customer super, super nice, right? Gave you all day long. You easily could have went into transitions like that with them. Just saying, hey, yeah, I can do this and I can do this and I can do this for you. Let me teach you about this. What do you think is going to happen if the rates drop? Um, you know, how many multiple offers are you going to get? You could walk them through so many scenarios. Can you see the pattern on these two? You're not getting yeah. toward your coaching and getting more, not necessarily aggressive because we don't get aggressive. We're simply, we're just being informative and engaging, right? Let's, let's listen to one more and we'll wrap it up. How's it going? Good. Hey, my name is Caden Potter. I'm with Achievement Realty. Did your neighbor tell you I was going to stop by today? Once again, your approach, phenomenal. That's that's how you want to start, right? Just direct into it. Here I am. Did your neighbor say he's going to stop by? This person, I think they're like, who? That's what I think I caught as I paused. Let's listen. Did your neighbors tell you I was going to stop by today? No, no. Um, main reason I'm here is because the market has changed so much drastically and not a lot of people know where it's going to go. Um, have you guys considered buying or selling any real estate? Uh, no, we were just renting here. Right now? Yeah. Um, how long have you guys been renting for? Uh, two years. Two years. Do you guys plan on buying soon or? Well, yeah, but I'm not, not right now because it's so expensive right now. Right. Um, you know, if I was able to save you like thirty to forty thousand. <coughs> renter pitch. Excuse me. We've got to get your rental pitch down, right? You're still going into if I could save you this much money. Let's dive into what they're losing. Right. Yeah, obviously they're they're paying 100% interest. So 100% interest. At that point, what what I would ask them is, um, you you ask them how long have you been renting? I would have said, can I be nosy with you? And every time they'll say yes. How much are you paying for rent? And then I'm going to reverse the psychology backwards on them. Now, out of that 2,200 bucks, 1,500 bucks, whatever they're saying. How much of that goes towards your principal? None of it. You're right. It's 100% interest. You just hit the nail on the head with that. So if you could get into something and actually have a cheaper payment, but yet have it pay off your mortgage, you're also able to write off your interest, your taxes, your closing costs. And then you're able to gain a huge chunk in appreciation each year. Would you consider doing it sooner? 
See, if you got all that before he brought up the objection and you heard his objection, right? The market. So right. let's see how you handle this market objection, right? And the market objection is going to be the same thing regardless of what we're saying. So let's listen. On your next purchase, um, through my knowledge and whatnot, is that I'm going to go back just a little bit here. Right. Um, you know, if I was able to save you like thirty to 40000 on your next purchase, um, through my knowledge and whatnot, is that something that you'd be interested in talking about? Or um... So one thing I caught there, you said from my knowledge, right? So if it's coming from you, Caden, and you're the salesperson, guess what? It's already out the window. It's got to be just pure data that you have to help them make sense of. It can't be from your knowledge. Even though you are going to walk them through the process, you don't want to have them come across as you're selling them. Because the minute you say, hey, let me tell you what you need to do because this is going to save you money. They're like, I don't need to do that. Okay, and you can't tell me what to do, right? You just want to make money on me. Right. Okay. But if you could ask them, hey, you know, what do you think the real estate market's going to do over the next five years, three years? Do you think it's going to go up or down? Why do you think that? Now we come into a realm where we're going to ask 30 questions. And you know the questions we're going to ask. You know, we start with market going up or down. What would happen to interest rates come down? What do you think it'll do to the market? How much is it going to drive the market up? Do you remember back in April when there was multiple offers? How much did it go over list price? Okay. What is our equity in Utah? How much did we increase in equity? And from the slides that I gave you this last week, we know that in Utah, we were up 15%. Okay. Yep. So if you take a 15% margin on a $300,000 house, it went up $45,000 just last year. Sir, did you make a $45,000 raise last year? And they're going to say no, right? So you're still, every one of those was just questions I ask you. And I just hit you with like eight or nine of them in a row. That's what you want to start doing to help them gain the insight and understanding of, yeah, I need to move sooner. Okay. And then you're going to go through about 15 more questions still, Caden, before we're ready to start closing. So look at the number of questions you're asking. We're not getting very many questions yet. You're into this about a minute. And we still don't have this guy's attention. Okay. And you've got to grab their attention super quick in order to keep them and moving forward. Let's see where you go. Well, yeah, but just give me a card. I mean, I can't, I mean, I can't, can't right now because my daughter has to take my daughter to work. Um, is it all right if I grab like maybe your information and I can text you or email you? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So immediately he's like, I don't see value in this. Can I get your card? And guess what? Legitimately, he may need to take his daughter somewhere. But if you would have caught his interest, he would have said, instead of your card, he would have said, can you come back? He would have scheduled the appointment with you if you would have brought legitimate value. And what you should have said instead of getting his contact info is when will you be back from, from dropping your daughter off? Let me come back and see you. Because I'm confident I can help you make a bunch of money just off equity and get you in a way better position than renting. When's the best time that I could help you walk you through this process? Right? Yeah, I should, I should have done that. I should have done that because I did end up texting him and he does want to meet still. But we're there you go. pushing it out a couple of days rather than me just being able to close in that day. You always want to close that day. So do you see what I'm saying? So even this guy, he you could have closed him. Even though you didn't ask the right questions or get you super engaged or get him caught really quick, he's answering your text messages, right? And he right. gave you the right phone number, <laughs> which is huge. Right. So Getting more urgency, I can see this already in three approaches you've given me. You've got to get more urgency, create more urgency, bring more urgency. And that's not done by being pushy. That's being done by asking the right questions. Okay, let's finish up how this goes. Uh, to be honest with you, um, I'm kind of hoping that sometimes I do so that the economy gets better. You and I both. Um, what is your name? So, so once again, he starts talking about the economy right there. You switched it back to getting his contact information. Right there was a perfect segue to keep that conversation going. Do you think the economy is going to get worse or, or, or better over the next little bit? Do you think our home prices are going to go up? This is why I need to meet with you sooner than later 
because I'm confident I can help you understand why it's better to buy now. And I can save you tens of thousands of dollars. Some people miss the boat and then aren't able to buy, period. So it'd be essential for us to be able to just walk through and see if this makes sense for you. If it doesn't make sense for you, no worries, right? But I'm confident once you understand what the market's going to do and what it's doing, that this would make a lot more sense for you to do it sooner than later. Can I come back by around seven o'clock tonight? But once yeah, again, that makes sense. Dude, you're just being too nice. You're being too nice in the fact that you're being, and it's it's not that you're being too nice because I love your nice personality. People love the nice personality. You're just not being assumptive in the cell. You're being very passive. And if you're very passive, you're going to miss a ton of deals, right? And I'm not saying to be aggressive. Remember that. That doesn't mean be aggressive. It means get in front of people and educate and help them understand why. Because that's honestly, Caden, that's your fiduciary duty is to help them understand why it's important for them to buy now. You're putting them in a better position than buying right now than renting. You're putting them in a better position to buy every day of the week, no matter what the market is, rather than renting. Okay, let's see where you finish up. Ricardo? What's your last name? Ornelas, O-R-N. So then you're just gathering phone number and all that. I won't keep that recorded since I were going to throw that on YouTube. But needless to say, can you see what I'm saying through those three role plays where we're at and yeah. what we need to change a little bit in order to get a little bit further down the pipe? So that's what I'd say to do, brother. I mean, you're, you're, you're doing the right things. We just need to get a little bit more aggressive. You need to ask a lot more questions that cause them to think and to tell you the answers you want. I think out of all the questions you've asked so far, I don't know how many of those you knew the answer to already that was going to take you from step one to step two to step three to step four, right? And that's what we've got to do is get a process built in your mind, a flow of I'm going to ask this question, then I'm going to ask this question, then I'm going to ask this question and walk them through a series of questions that's going to cause them to go, Caden, this makes sense. When can you show me a house? That's basically, and you've got to have that in your mind, right? Before you even start you know, the first approach because people are robotic. They're going to say the same things over and over and over again. And what's crazy is you're still going to pick up a deal. If you go back and meet with him and do the steps that I'm telling you to do right now, you'll close him. That's a done deal. Okay. We'll link him up with the lender and get him under contract. That'll be a quick one. It's just a matter of asking him the right questions. when you go back, when you go back to that listing appointment, record it and let's go over it. Cause you should okay. be able to close this guy. This is an easy deal. I can tell you right now that that's an easy deal. Okay. Well, dude, thanks for being vulnerable with all this and letting us, you know, work through these and, and, and pick on them. And hopefully everybody here on YouTube can, can watch this and see if you might be doing some of the same things. And, uh, but we'll look forward to you here on, on the channel again. Thanks for, thanks for watching.